All right, hi, I'm Arjun, and today I'll be talking about bringing clothing into desired configurations with limited perception. So the problem is that deformable objects have extremely high dimensional state spaces, and although there's been successes in folding many articles, such as shirts and pants and so on, when starting out in a spread out configuration, um, by assuming that they're spread out, this essentially reduces the dimension of the problem. Because if, it, if you know it's spread out, uh, a much smaller number of state variables is relevant. The question then becomes, how do we lay out an article of clothing? And many would say that this is actually one of the biggest challenges in a robotic laundry, is how to deal with clothing in an arbitrary initial configuration. So the goal then is to start with an unknown article of clothing from a candidate set in an unknown in initial configuration. Determine the, we want to determine the identity of the article and estimate its configuration. And then we want to bring the article into some desired configuration. So for example, you might start out with this clump of clothing. You might figure out that it's a t-shirt. And then you want to take it into a configuration where the robot is holding it by the shoulders. And so our strategy for this involves two phases. The first phase is the disambiguation phase in which the robot uses sensing and manipulation to bring the article into a more identical configuration. We then estimate the state and identity of the article. The second phase is the reconfiguration phase, in which we plan and execute a sequence of manipulations to bring the article into the desired configuration. For example, like I said, we, uh, we start with some clump of clothing. Through the disambiguation phase, we take it into this arbitrary known configuration. And so on any given run, it might be in a different configuration at this point, but we know what it is. So for example, in this case, we know it's by the shoulder, or sorry, by the sleeves, but the next time it might be by one sleeve and one other part on the shirt. And then we work it into the desired configuration in the reconfiguration phase. And so for disambiguation, we use a probabilistic model, which is essentially an HMM. The hidden state consists of the article, which is the category and size, so that's A here, that does not change over time and then the left and right grass points, which is G, which does change over time because we're working um, the cloth through some sequence of manipulations to figure out what it is. The 3D coordinates of the mesh are not in the state. They're implied by the grass points on the article and the locations of the grippers. This significantly reduces the size of the state space. The evidence then depends on how the robot is holding the cloth. If the robot has the cloth by one gripper, we extract the height. The robot has a cloth by two grippers, we extract the contour. So here you see the robot holding a towel, the evidence, sorry, by one gripper. So the evidence right now is just the height. The, measure, the measurement model for this observation is just a Gaussian centered at the simulated height plus some offset. So we have some way of simulating what the height will be if you're holding it by some point. And we use the height to figure out the probability of the observed height. When you're holding it by two grippers, we extract the contour. And the, the measurement model now is based on the cost of aligning this extracted contour, which is pictured here, with the simulated contour. To align the extracted contour with the simulated contour, we use dynamic time warping. With the cost function, that's just based on the pixel coordinates and the first and second derivatives of the pixel coordinates with respect to arc length. And so here you see an example alignment where blue is the extracted contour and yellow is the simulated contour. So I told you what the observations are, but not the transitions yet. The challenge is that even with our assumptions on the state space, it's still large. And measurements are expensive because simulations are expensive. Every time you make a measurement, you have to run a lot of simulations. And so we'd like to reduce the number of likely states through the regress strategy. We're going to choose our manipulations in such a way that at the end of it, only a small number of states has not, or has not zero probability, essentially. And so what we do is we repeatedly grasp the lowest hanging point of the article. And this results in a Markov chain with the stationary distribution concentrated on a small number of potential grass states. We can actually formalize this for polygonal convex shapes. For an n-sided poly polygonal convex article, repeatedly grasping the lowest hanging point n times will bring the article into a known configuration of the symmetry. And so the strategy we're using is we're going to repeatedly grasp the lowest hanging point. However, this is still noisy. 
The robot doesn't always grab the lowest hanging point, and furthermore, we don't always even know what the lowest hanging point is. And so this distribution here is essentially a softmax. And what this is doing is it's saying that if you're holding a point, points that are close to that point on the clock will have low probability of being the lowest hanging point, and points that are far away have higher probability of being the lowest hanging point. And the only parameter here is lambda, which is tunable, and it just reflects how well the simulation matches reality. After a few iterations, only a few plausible pairs remain. And so here's the results of this procedure. Here you see a few different articles. And um, in red, you've got high probability states. And like here and here. And in blue, in the middle of the articles generally, you've got low probability states. And you'll see that the high probability states tend to extremities of the articles. So I mentioned that we simulate articles when we're taking measurements. So I'll talk briefly about the class simulator, but I won't get into details. So we create triangulated, triangulated meshes for each of the articles with little human input. We use a standard cloth model with a relaxation that allows it to be formulated as a convex program. This is nice because these can be solved efficiently, and the solution does not depend on an initial guess. And so each triangle is strain limited in the mesh, and all that means is that it can't stretch to be too big. So our convex, pro our convex program is essentially of this form, where we're minimizing the potential energy which is, in this case is just the z-coordinates of each node in the mesh, such that these constraints are met. And one of the constraints is that the strain constraints are met, and that just means, again, that the triangles can't stretch to be too big. And the other constraints are that, at this point, the robot is holding two points on the cloth. So when we're simulating it, one of the constraints is that the left point is where the robot's left gripper is, and the right point is where the robot's right gripper is. So here's an example of the full disambiguation phase run on a pair of pants. We see the pants start in some arbitrary clump, and the robot executes the lowest hanging point procedure. And instead of actually holding up the article, it drags it across the table. That's essentially equivalent, but it's more easily done with the PR2. And it's also taking height observations as it's doing that procedure. Every time it takes a, it's about to grab the lowest hanging point. And at this point, it just took a contour observation. And now it knows that it's holding a pair of pants by the legs. So the next phase is reconfiguration. We know the article. We know the configuration. We want to hold it by the hips, let's say, for the pants. So the goal is to bring it into the desired configuration. So what we do is we plan a sequence of two-point regrafts and laydowns such that the final two-point grasp is the desired configuration. And the way we do this is that the robot uses the simulator that I just introduced to think through what would happen if it regrafted it somewhere. And it can search through a sequence of regrafts such that the, at the very end of this procedure, it'll be holding it the way we want it to hold it. And so there's noise, however, in grasping and in tracking the cloth. And so it needs to grasp the cloth carefully in order to track it throughout the whole procedure. And so what we do is we restrict the robot to only grasp what we call exposed points. And more formally, these points are just the points that are graspable if there's no potentially troublesome points nearby. And what that means is that if there's points that are kind of folded over onto the cloth, so in that case, um, they're close in Euclidean distance, like this point would be close to this point, but far away on the surface of the cloth, then that would lead to a bad grasp because you, you'd be grabbing the sleeve and the body of the shirt. And that's not desirable because we don't model that. So we just say it can't grab that. And when it's searching through that sequence of states, it doesn't consider that one. And it usually takes one or two regrafts to reach the desired configuration. So here's an example of that. This is just a continuation of the previous video. So the first thing it does is it lays the pants down. And at this point, it's trying to figure out what the desired grasp points are. It grabs those. And in this case, the desired points were the hips. If they weren't the hips, what it would have done is grab two other points, pick those up, lay it back down again, and then hopefully in that configuration, it could have reached the desired points. And that might loop two or three times. So we ran some disambiguation experiments to judge how well the first phase worked. And there's three candidate article sets that we used. The first included only the correct article. And the goal of this test was just to see how well it, 
it did at estimated configuration if it already knew what the article was. And we see that it did pretty well. It got 95% of the time, it would get the correct graphs between five, or within five centimeters. In the second test, we added four size transform versions of the correct article for a total of five articles. And so each transformation was um, different in, by about five to 10 centimeters in one dimension. For example, with t-shirts, we would make one of the, the sleeves longer by five centimeters or 10 centimeters or something like that. And so with the size transform articles thrown in, we see that it only picked out the right size 64% of the time, but we're dealing with things that aren't that different. They're only off by five centimeters in one dimension. But what's interesting is that it still got the correct, correct grass points on those articles. So it doesn't know the exact size, but it still knows how you're holding it. And that's nice because that means that even if you don't have the, the, per, the perfect size, um, you'll likely still succeed in the reconfiguration phase because you still know what configuration it's in, even if you don't know the right size. And the last test set was all seven test articles that are pictured here. And all of these were never before seen except for the mesh generation. So there's no parameters trained in any of these articles. And we see that it picks out the correct article 92% of the time and the correct grass points on the correct article 90% of the time. And so the last experiment we ran was just a set of end-to-end -end experiments where it did the, the disambiguation and the reconfiguration. And the overall success rate here was 20 out of 30. And we defined a success to be when it did everything correctly. It knew what it was, and it was holding the article by the desired points at the end of the sequence. And out of the 10 failures, nine of them were when the robot could just not reach a point. And so we could get around that by allowing base motion. And only one of the failures was when it, the disambiguation procedure returned the wrong grasp state. And so we've proposed a probabilistic framework for identifying and estimating the configuration of clothing articles. We gave a method for planning manipulations, for bringing an article from an arbitrary known configuration to a desired one. And we proposed an efficient convex version of a standard class simulator that allows us to simulate many articles in many configurations in a short amount of time. There's promising exper experimental results from all of these. And although the end-to-end -end performance was limited by the robot's reach and dexterity, we could get around that by integrating the base motion into planning. And we can also add appearance features for improved dis disambiguation performance, such as buttons and words and logos and so on. But right now, all we're using is the height and the contour. 